So there's a question here about um, having a passport or getting a passport or getting citizenship. And I'm explaining the fact that in, in law, our nation was uh, granting citizenship fairly easy, fairly quickly based on allegiance. And a passport would then soon follow. People would then start learning English and they would devote their life to being an American or citizen of the United States of America. It's only been recently, um, in the last 150 years, where green cards, naturalization process, 14th Amendment, these various different things kicked in towards the United States. Now, um, do I want to take on a case where and go old school on applying um, and circumventing the uh, Department of State's need for naturalization certificate for somebody who's been here for 50 years and make allegiance? The answer is yes. Do I have time to do it right now? No. Um, would I like to get an attorney on it? Yes. Do we need a lot of money to do that? Yes. Um, and so for, for, and what I mean by attorney, there are good attorneys, there's good lawyers out there, and they would be able to handle um, responses from the Department of State forcing old law using memorandums and points of authorities and, and focus them on, on the truth versus on um, a perception of truth by a non-licensed, non-bar-carded person such as myself. And so uh, I would suggest um, just becoming naturalized first um, with the reservation of rights and interests for yourself and then becoming a state citizen after uh, to just get it going. Because I don't have the time, nor do we have the the legal power to maneuver uh, bringing somebody into this nation under an old law, um, which I believe is still doable. Let me, let, me explain, let me share this with you, just so you can take it into consideration. In law here in this nation, if you make it to this land, um, you have rights, God-given unalienable rights that need to be protected. If you're on the ocean and you're struggling up the water to get onto the land, but not out of the water, they can pick you up on a boat and take you back to your home country, Cuba. They can't do that if you're on the land. They have to incorporate you into the ice camps system. What you don't realize is the second you get onto the land, you have God-given unalienable rights, but you accept going into an ice camp, you accept taking a shower, you accept filling out their forms, you accept um, that you're a non-resident alien trying to become a resident, trying to become a green card holder, trying to become a U.S. citizen, and it's all done in deceit instead of giving you a path that's a little bit easier. Now, I agree. There's some people coming in this nation that have no desire to become good Americans or good citizens of the United States of America or good citizens of a state. And they have nefarious desires. So this is a very long winded answer, but yeah, there, there's, a, there's only like four or five people that I know that I've put onto the path of naturalization because I know once you're accepted there becoming naturalized, I can flip you. And they can't remove you. They can't kick you out because you're lawful. So I know maybe not something you want to hear, but it's a fact. And it's an important fact for all of us to start realizing. But if anybody has a ton of money they want to put towards um, a big law firm to support it and to help remove, uh, you know, jurisdictional challenges by the DOS of whether you have a right um, using old, old law, that's a, that's a whole nother choice. But holy crap, what if we got that put together? Um, and I, I would love to have it put together. And that's the ultimate goal that I'm, I want with lawyers that I work with is trying to find back doors for people through the DOS just to make this thing work. But uh, I know I wouldn't answer, but it's an important one. But my short list is people like you that, you know, there's not a big amount of them. And so the quick answer for me is naturalization and state citizenship.